Hello everyone, it's Technic Builder. I've been away for a while. Um, I was busy, I moved, all my stuff was in storage, then I started doing a Lego job where I would teach kids EV3 programming, so I had to buy an EV3 of my own and learn all that stuff because I really wasn't that into EV3 before, and that was well and fun, but um, yeah, working with kids is kind of hard. <laughs> I've coached kids before for swimming, but coaching kids at the end of a day uh, for an academic thing is uh, a bit more challenging, especially when the kids are already tired. So I don't do that anymore, but that gives me more time to focus on Lego stuff, and uh, so that is fine. Um, if you're a Lego purist, some of the things you see in front of you might be scary. There's, uh-oh, a soldering iron and a Dremel and a really crappy saw. In fact, this has got plastic shavings on it, so it might as well be covered in blood. <clears throat> what I'm doing is I'm modifying some battery packs. In the meantime, I did a lot more research on, I think it's Philo, it's Philo, right? P-H-I-L-O? Anyway, he's posted a lot of stuff about the battery packs and their capabilities, and um, I really learned just how limiting they were. You know, first of all, if you are gonna use rechargeable cells, a uh, voltage drop, we all know that. Uh, secondly, the current limiting resistor uh, supposedly kicks in at about 750 milliamps, uh, whereas the new V2 receivers can push through, I think it's roughly three amps sustained, 3.3, somewhere around there. So, you know, for the giant crane that I'm building, you know, I'd have to use 15 battery packs <laughs> in the chassis if I were to try to stay under that current limitation for each um, pack. So instead, what I'm doing is I've, well, <laughs> as you can see, I'd sawed off the top of a pack so I can use eight cells instead of six. And I haven't uh, shunted it yet, but I do plan on shunting this resistor so I don't have to deal with that. Um, what I'm trying to do is find a happy medium between a completely custom pack or, or actual Lego packs. Um, you know, I could always take a uh, battery pack from an RC vehicle and uh, modify that and use that. But, you know, I, okay, I'm certainly not a purist anymore with all the stuff you see on my desk, but I, I, I at least want to show some respect to the building system. So I figure maybe, hey, at least if I use the switch, um, hmm, that shut off really quickly. Interesting. I don't have a short that didn't happen before. Well, the diode comes on in that direction. No problems there. Oh, you know what? This wasn't pushed all the way in. If I push this in the other direction, okay, there we go. It just had a loose connection. So what I wanted to show you was the performance difference um, between two packs and this original pack. Uh, if I can get the cover off, I've just got, you know, uh, alkaline batteries in there. And obviously rechargeables here. Um, I'm also gonna show you the difference with a modified extra large motor. Uh, I've got 26 of these and I've been modifying some of them. I'm gonna modify 10 and take out one stage of gear reduction, and I'll probably make a video on that. I've already done six, and I've got four more to do. Now, if you look at this, you'll see that part of this clip is gone, but it really doesn't matter. Um, it still stays together quite well, plus once it's built into a thing, it's gonna be held together with pins anyway. But if you've never seen what an XL motor, or how an XL motor performs with one stage of gear reduction missing, well, it spins about like that. Now, these are alkaline batteries, so if I put a load on this motor, not really having much of an issue with hitting the current limitation on the battery pack, because these batteries just can't produce that much current. At no point is this motor coming completely to a stop. While the pitch is changing, it's because the amount of resistance I'm putting on it is variable. The, the motor's still but the battery pack is still consistently driving this motor. Now, <clears throat> let's switch battery packs 
over to the modified pack. You know what, I'm not even looking at the camera. Gotta let me make sure you guys can actually see. <clears throat> I switched to the modified pack. These are not fully charged, so, you know, at full charge each cell is about 1.45 volts, and then it experiences a voltage drop as soon as a load is applied. These are probably about 1.2 volts right now, because I haven't charged them in a while. Okay, so immediately, well, higher rotational speed, so I guess voltage is a little bit higher. Now, as I start applying a load to this, I'm applying a steady load, but at some point, that current limitation should kick in. Up oh, there it goes. Okay, and it slowly comes back. We'll stop it one more time. Boom, there's the current limitation. Okay, so that's the current functionality of this battery pack. And that's just running one extra large motor. Um, I would like to be able to run at least two motors per uh, IR receiver, and um, so uh, that's why I plan on shunting <laughs> that resistor. Now, just to show you one other thing, this is another extra large motor where I took out both stages of gear reductions. So this is a direct drive from the motor to this propeller. Uh, let me show you the old battery pack first, okay? And again, this isn't really fair because voltages are different, blah, 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 but... You know, this actually spins fast enough to, um, you know, produce wind. Maybe you can hear it. If not, um, yeah, it's actually producing a noticeable moving column of air. If I take this on the modified pack, and again, this is not a scientific test because the voltages are all over the place. Nothing's charged. Um, immediately, oh, let's change direction. Immediately, you can hear a higher pitch, so it is turning at a higher RPM. If this was a larger uh, propeller, then it would be drawing more amps, and um, you know, maybe that resistor would become a problem. Probably not. Propellers usually don't do that, but. Anyway, if you've never seen an XL motor with one stage of gear reduction removed or two stages removed, well, now you have, and I'll make a video on how I did that. Here's another extra large motor. Here's the next one that I'm about to modify. I already took the side off. Um, if you've never seen the internals of one of these, it's kind of hard to do in front of the camera. Well, <clears throat> here's the first stage. <laughs> Here are the other gears <laughs> from other motors I've already disassembled. So these will go ahead and go in there. And these have a small amount of grease on them, uh, which, I mean, it's plastic on plastic. Uh, really, that grease just seems to be a bit of a power hog. So when I open these up, I actually take some of, the, some of it off. And here's the second stage. Um, so that's what it looks like. Um, I'll make another video showing how to modify these. By the way, a medium motor also has two stages in it. it they're just smaller. And I think the large motor also has two stages as well. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just nothing really more to show with those. If you've seen one opened up, you've seen all of them. On the back of an extra large motor, um, there's a capacitor and there's, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, therm, thermistor, therms, you know, it's a temperature sensitive resistor, uh, which you could also take off. Um, but then you lose all current protection at the motor, and I think I'll actually keep those in. Uh, if I'm running these motors at a slightly higher voltage already, they've already got enough, enough stress on them, so I think I will leave that protection in. But, um, yeah, I think I'm okay with shunting this resistor. Even if these batteries end up in a dead short, they probably <laughs> won't catch on fire. So it's probably safe enough. Um, the only other thing I really want to show, well, you know, I don't even know why I'm showing it because it's nothing that special, but I did recently acquire two of these and um, these do produce, yeah, about twice the wattage of an extra large motor with a stage of gear reduction taken out. Um, rotational speeds on the 
slow port or similar. I don't really remember. It's all on Philo's website. It, he'll give you all the info for everything, but I didn't think much about these until I actually got one. They really do uh, produce about double the power, and they're a lot smaller than I thought they were. I always thought these were bigger, uh, but that's how big they actually are. So, now you know. Okay, well that's gotten long enough. Um, oh, well I'll show you one more thing. The crane does still exist. Hey, it's still sitting up there. But I'll be disassembling that, because in a previous video I talked about how it's a bad design, blah blah blah. Basically the crane um, has gone all the way back to this, all the way back to the wheel hub. The main issue with my previous design is I just had bad, bad methodologies with um, the wheel hubs. So completely redesigned with a, I don't know what you call it, ball socket on the bottom, smaller one on the top. It still has uh, gear reduction. Wait, why? There we go. So I've still got one to three gear reduction at the hub. You can also see that those two balls are not in alignment. So that puts the, oh, what is that? Kingpin angle um, intersecting roughly just inside the bottom edge of the wheel. Uh, I'll probably talk about these more later. But um, anyway, the crane, it's still going to happen. I'm still going to build it. Um, but I've been busy doing other stuff.